What's going on, everybody? My name is Zellaprins. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today we are checking out yet another SCP video by Dr. Bob. This is SCP-1352 Sentient Dust Devil. And if you don't know what dust devils are, they're basically these little sandstorms that occur in the middle of the desert. So it's pretty much all my knowledge on what dust devils are. I didn't really study too much into like the desert regions. I studied more on when it comes to like uh, like natural disaster like stuff or I don't even know if think, think, think a dust devil is considered a natural disaster more like a natural phenomenon of the desert um, but I mainly studied tsunamis that's what I mainly studied I didn't study tornadoes that much I didn't study earthquakes that much mostly just tsunamis well that's my extension of knowledge and I think I We'll do some more research on dust doubles later on, but today we're just reacting to the SCP version. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into this in three, two, one, boom. The desert is a dangerous place. It's been a couple of weeks since Scorpions I also reacted to a rocks, SCP video. Stingers filled with venom. Step out of place, and you might hear reacting the threatening to a bunch of other rattle stuff. of a snake <clears throat> prepared to bite if you get too close to its hiding spot. <laughs> Black widows spin their webs on logs that might look like an inviting place to sit until it's too late. I hate spiders still. creep across the ground at night. Pinchers packing a painful punch. Ugh. There are bobcats, coyotes, mountain lions, and Gila monsters. And that's not to mention the brutality of the landscape itself. A place where getting lost could mean death from exposure, dehydration, or both. But it is True. also uniquely beautiful. A stark but striking landscape where nightfall brings a sky full of more stars than one could even imagine being in the sky. That is why the young woman has decided to go camping go. out here in the California desert. And much to the horror of many of her loved ones, she has decided to do it alone. Her parents begged her not to go and they... Why do people always do this stuff kind of things alone? It's always more of a situation where you're going to get hurt and you have nobody else around you to help. So why do people continuously keep doing this? Why? First heard of her plans, but she assuaged their fears as best she could reminding them of her years of experience camping in harsh environments. She hiked most of the Appalachian Trail with only an ex-boyfriend for help, after all. She's an adult, and they could do nothing to stop her from embarking on the trip. Besides, she isn't going out into the uncharted wilderness, but to a campground with plenty of signage and guidelines. She didn't just choose this on a whim. There's going to be a massive meteor shower, and the sight of it from the desert, with no light pollution to dim the stars, will be a truly once-in-a-lifetime what are the chances of her coming back alive? Zero. Experience. That's what so I'm betting on. Sets out on the day of her trip, driving her loaded up truck out to the picturesque desert site. Kind of truck she's driving. Spending the next few days soaking up the four one fifty, hiking the rocky trails nearby, and witnessing the magic. Not a car person, so I don't know too many models. After parking the truck and hiking a bit further into the site, she settles on a spot to pitch a tent. It doesn't take long. After this much time camping, she's established a solid routine. Before long, her little home away from home is all set up, and she unpacks the rest of her supplies just in time for the sun to begin setting, flooding the sky with vibrant oranges and reds that slowly fade and soften to pinks and lilacs, then into steadily deepening blues. Eventually, the stars wink into view, and the whole of the cosmos is sprawled out over her head. She shivers as the desert air begins to rapidly cool, the sand failing to retain any heat without the light of the sun. The hiker quickly builds a fire True. with some scraps of wood and a match. She used to try to light it by rubbing sticks together or using a flint, but realized there was no harm in cutting corners a bit. She hikes for the enjoyment of the wild, not to win any sort of survivorship competition. As the fire crackles away, casting a warm, inviting light over her little slice of heaven, she brews a pot of tea over the flames sipping on her tea and enjoying some beans straight from the can like a cowboy in an old western film she watches the sky there they go the shooting stars rocketing through the air trailing silvery tails behind them first one then a dozen then two dozen and so many she question will the stars have anything to do with the scp as like a luring tactic for it to draw people into so that way the dust devil can attack people thoughts couldn't count them if she tried. The flow slows, and the sky quiets again. She lets out a big whoosh of breath that she didn't even realize she was holding. Incredible. And she'll get to do it again tomorrow night. But for now, she's getting tired, and has an early morning of hiking planned tomorrow. Time to turn in. 
But as the hiker crawls into her sleeping bag and zips up her tent, every hair on her body suddenly stands on end. Here it comes. She holds her breath, listening to the sounds just outside. Something's out there, moving with soft, fluid steps. Oh, it's no an animal. animal Never mind. Like that. She unzips the door of her tent just enough to peer out into the darkness. Her stomach drops as her eye finds the source of the sound and her creeping sense of dread. A mountain lion is circling her tent. Her mind reels as she struggles to remember the survival guides she's read over the years. She faintly recalls something about trying to make a lot of noise and scare the animal away, but what if she's misremembering? What if she tries, it doesn't work, and the mountain lion decides to attack instead? Suddenly, the mountain lion growls, a low rumble emanating from the back of its throat. The hiker quickly zips the tent shut and pulls herself into a fetal position. She'll just hide here and not make any noise. Maybe it'll get bored and leave. But it doesn't. Instead, the tent begins to shake. The hiker can't see what's rocking the tent back and forth. Is it the mountain lion? More than one? No, wait, whatever it is, is all around her. She can hear the whistle of wind whipping against the walls of the tent. See that they're shaking like she's caught is it attacking the mountain lion? The mountain lion, further away now, yowls. Then, everything's quiet. After a long moment, she unzips the wall of the tent again, peering out. The mountain lion is nowhere to be seen. Whatever freak storm just blew through here must have scared it away. With a sigh of relief, she rolls over and closes Why are you her going eyes, back to sleep? allowing sleep to wash over her and carry her away. It's a the terrible morning, idea. It's as if the whole nightmare never happened. No mountain lion, no storm. The only thing that's different about her campsite is a missing bag that she had brought. It didn't have anything vital inside, just a disposable camera and a few rolls of film. It's a bit disappointing that something happened to it, but it's nothing she can't survive. She wakes up to the sunrise, the gentle light of dawn pouring over the rocks and sand and bathing the desert in gold. She brews some coffee, packs a small bag with water and food, and sets off on a hike up the nearby rocks. After about an hour of steady walking, she stops for some water, a snack, and a look at the landscape. It really is beautiful. But what's that? Just over the hill. At first, it looks like a column of smoke from a fire Here or some kind of explosion. But then it moves closer, and she gets a better look at it. It's not smoke at all, but dust whipped up in a whirlwind, rising up into a funnel like a miniature tornado. A dust devil. She's never actually seen one in person before. As far as she's heard, they're not usually dangerous. Maybe they're a bit unpleasant if you get caught up in one, but otherwise they're nothing to worry about. But as this one gets closer, it's also getting bigger. It isn't just a matter of perspective. The funnel is growing taller and taller the closer it gets. The hiker begins to panic. She needs to get out of here. But where can she go? If she runs too quickly back the way she came, she risks falling and twisting an ankle, or worse. As she's yeah, doing that in the hiker, sand is not fun. I've done it moves before. Closer and closer until it's right in front of her. She stares wide-eyed as it suddenly stops. The whirlwind itself keeps spinning, winds and dust and debris whipping around inside of it, but it is not advancing any further. It simply it's observing exactly where it is, as if it's waiting for something. She almost laughs at the thought. Why is she anthropomorphizing this whirlwind, this accident of unusual desert weather? The whirlwind speeds up suddenly, rocking back and forth, and then something flies out of it, careening toward her. As it lands in the dirt by her feet, it's her bag. She recognizes it. The little camera bag. She reaches out and picks it so up. So is this not a hostile? Sure. So is this not a hostile SCP? Is it just the one that's like chill and just hangs out in the desert? Enough. The camera is inside, along with the rolls of film. It isn't even broken. She looks up at the whirlwind in disbelief. Something compels her to speak, and she calls out, "Thank you." At this, the whirlwind wriggles back and forth, then suddenly rushes toward her. She opens her mouth to scream in shock, but nothing happens. She isn't swept away or pummeled with debris. The winds slow to a gentle breeze around her, and it lingers there for a moment as if holding her in a tight, excited hug. Then it retreats, back to where it was before. It lingers there for a little while, waiting. Um, bye. At this, the whirlwind drifts away, leaving her standing there in disbelief. <laughs> The it's friendly heard that the desert was a strange place one of her friends swears to this day that she heard something calling her name in the middle of the night while she sat by a campfire once and another friend that's unusual claimed to see ghosts out there 
but she's never heard of anything quite like this. Later that night, she sits by the fire, roasting hot dogs and continuing to mull it over. Whether she was imagining its seemingly intelligent behavior or not, the Dust <coughs> Devil did return her camera. And she has empirical evidence of that, and a day's worth of pictures, too. As she takes a bite of her hot dog, she feels something watching her. She glances up and sees the flash. Oh my god. Mountain lion's it's eyes. back. She can't be certain, but it feels like the same mountain lion from the night before. A shiver runs down her spine at the sight of it standing there, watching her. It's back. It's a beautiful animal, but something about the way it's looking at her, the way it's sniffing the air, gives her the distinct feeling it has marked her as its prey. She had hoped she wouldn't have to confront the wild animal, oh boy. but she has no other choice. She stands up, raising her arms above her head, and roars. The mountain lion doesn't budge. She stomps her feet, roars again. It swishes its tail, then begins stalking toward her. Is it she not gonna run, attack her? Chase her? And that is not a race she's going to win. No, you would definitely wouldn't her win her against a mountain lion. Her feet seem to freeze to the spot. Then, a rock whizzes through the air an inch from the mountain lion's nose. It reels back in surprise and confusion, just as another rock shoots toward it. All at once, a hailstorm of rocks and pebbles fly toward the mountain lion, pelting it. Not enough to injure it, but certainly enough to badly startle it. The animal lets out a yelp, turns, and runs away. The hiker glances in the direction the rocks seem to come from, and sees that dust devil swaying back and forth, watching her. It's back. It came back. A realization washes over the hiker. This whirlwind, whatever it was, protected her before, and it just protected her again. She grabs her camera and snaps a quick picture, not to show anyone, but just to remember this trip and her unexplainable friend. Thank you, she whispers. <laughs> she has no idea, but this lucky hiker just encountered the entity that the SCP Foundation calls SCP-1352. SCP- I would think that the sentient dust, de dust devil would have been like a hostile SCP. But no, it's, it's a friendly one. And it's protecting other humans. That that is something I wasn't expecting when I was going into this. I was expecting the entity to just scoop up people and just take them somewhere and just I don't know, kill them or something. But no, this is the complete opposite of what I was expecting, which is a nice surprise for once. P one three five two is a whirlwind that has been classified as a dust devil due to its <clears throat> lack of cloud base and intense electrical activity. It has been observed to have the sentience level and behavior of a domesticated house pet such as a dog. So how do you contain this? Have indicated that its wind speeds are at least I'm guessing you kilometers can. an hour, but this can change depending on the entity's mood. SCP-1352 can be characterized as friendly and appears to be interested in interacting with humans. It carries small debris within its winds for this very purpose. After it has interacted with the person, the funnel of SCP-1352 will shrink to a height of three meters, and it will attempt to surround the person or persons it has interacted with. This is meant as a sign of happiness and is equivalent to a hug. If SCP-1352 becomes overly excited, its wind speeds and funnel size will rapidly shift, growing larger and speeding up to a rate of nearly 100 kilometers per hour. Shit. If the entity becomes angry, it will grow to the size of an F5 tornado, the most dangerous class of tornado. Oh my god. If SCP-1352 enters this enraged state, it will attack the cause of its anger with debris thrown at speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour. If SCP-1352 huh. is not given ample opportunity to interact with people, it will begin to act out in a variety of attention-seeking ways. If these fail, it will attempt to entertain itself. SCP-1352 has the ability to manipulate its wind in order to pick up items and place them back down, and has been observed moving items that weigh up to 500 kilograms. It has also been shown to understand and respond to verbal commands such as stay, go, come here, and fetch. Over time, huh. the research team has been able to instruct SCP-1352 to arrange objects into patterns and solve simple puzzles such as Wait, so they They've managed to capture this before, but it's now back in the wild? Did they release it, or did it just get out? Similar objects to one another. SCP-1352 was captured by a mobile task force of Foundation How operatives, did they deployed it? to track the entity after the Foundation identified it as something other than an ordinary dust devil. 
In order to provide a definitive record of how exactly the entity was captured, an interview was conducted between the site director of... Yeah, I need to hear this. How do you capture an entity like this? ...and the task force member responsible for apprehending it. After the site director asked how he captured SCP-1352, the agent replied, well, I wouldn't exactly call it capture. Anywho, after they called us in, we tracked the sucker to the coast. There, we found him wandering around picking up some trash on the beaches. Not sure why. Guess he was bored. The site director asked how the agent and his team <laughs> that I the race. He set the scene. Well, at first we surrounded him. This only aggravated him and he started to grow in size. The wind was really picking up, so we backed away. We weren't able to call him for backup. He was causing some kind of radio interference. He just stayed at that spot, trying to suck us in. Agent redacted, got sucked up, and was thrown several feet away. The agent was badly injured, and his back was broken by the impact. Oof. The head of the task force was unable to get to his fallen team member, and as he looked up, he saw that the twister was right above his head. No way out. For a moment, he worried this might be his demise. But then, all at once, the wind died down. The twister shrank until it was only a third of its original size. Then, a piece of wood nearby was lifted off the ground and tossed so that it landed right next to him. For a moment, oh. the agent just sat <laughs> just, there, glancing back and forth. It wanted, it just wanted to play. <laughs> it didn't want to hurt anyone. It just, it was thrown into that situation where it needed to defend itself. Piece of wood and the twister. Why wasn't it attacking? What was it waiting for? It moved side to side in anticipation, like a dog wagging its tail expectantly. When the agent reached for the piece of wood, touching it with his hand, the funnel began to move faster. It was excited. Following his instincts and the cues from the dust devil, the man picked up the pieces of wood. This action was met by the funnel stretching taller, brimming with playful energy. It reminded him of his childhood dog, angling for a game of fetch. So he pulled his arm back and threw the piece of wood down the beach. Sure enough, the funnel of wind chased after the wooden piece, fetching it. <laughs> I'm sure his teammates the were like, what the hell? The rest of his team rushed toward the injured man and checked his wounds. They called for a med team to come and provide assistance. Then the agent looked up. The twister was back and <laughs> it had retrieved the hunk of wood. Once more, it threw the wood at him and waited, wriggling with anticipation. One of the task force agents spoke. <laughs> I think this twister wants to play fetch with you. <laughs> At first, the agent protested, worried about the entity's capacity for violence. After all, it had just caused what would likely be permanent damage to his teammate's spine. But I mean, the true. other man pressed the matter. He's not attacking us right now, and besides, I'd rather have him calm now than angry. That was a fair point. Yeah, true. So the agent played fetch with SCP-1352 <laughs> until the recovery team. Alright, this is probably this is really funny. Hunk of wood down the beach and waiting for the twister to chase after it, pick it up, and bring it back. What else could he do? It wasn't as if they could shoot the thing. Yeah, sure, it's wind. wind. Using its new favorite toy, they managed to lure the twister into a holding container. But it didn't want to be left alone in there. The agent explained, Someone had to stay with him, or else he'd get mopey and make another ruckus. We ended up drawing straws, and Agent Redacted drew the short one. I'd have to admit, that was my favorite. We still visit him now and then, and he even said sorry to Agent Redacted. SCP-1352 <laughs> is kept in an enclosure in an isolated valley in Nevada. So it's still captured. Storm shelters. The entity has been given permission to wander around the enclosure, provided it is supervised by at least one security guard during the process. The enclosure is five square kilometers in size and is Damn. surrounded by perimeter fencing rooted 10 meters into the ground. It must be securely placed to prevent it from being dislodged. For the purposes of enrichment, Debris must be placed in the enclosure for the entity to interact with. If there is not adequate debris, or if it flies out of the enclosure, more must be provided. Any personnel huh. who wish to enter the enclosure may only do so with prior authorization from the site director, and they must wear proper protective equipment for the duration of their time inside. If the entity should attempt to leave the enclosure, guards or other site personnel in the area should use verbal commands in order to stop it from breaching containment. While reading hmm. the transcript of the interview in SCP-1352's file, I was struck by a particular detail in the agent's story. He claimed that the Twister had actually apologized to the man it had injured during capture. But how, I wondered, could that be possible? The entity has no mouth, no hands to sign <clears throat> did with, it use, and it did, did it use objects to spell out the word sorry? does not appear to possess any psychic abilities either. Well. I got my answer in the form of an addendum added to the file shortly after I first began to read it. 
on a certain morning, which has of course been redacted for all those without the required security clearance, field researchers noticed a large debris formation left on the ground by SCP-1352. It was too large to be seen from ground level, but with the use of an unmanned aerial vehicle, the researchers were able to get a clear look at it. The debris, composed of rocks, leaves, and pieces of wood, spelled out the word, hello. Now, it was misspelled, missing one of its L's, oh. but that's still quite impressive for a funnel of high-speed sentient wind. Following this development, the site director has authorized forthcoming communication-based experiments. I very much look forward to reading about them when the time comes. Now, if you'll excuse huh. me, I think I'll take my dog out for a game of fetch. It's been entirely too long. What, you didn't think I had interests outside of researching the anomalous forces that hide in the secret pockets of our world? Well, I do. You'll find I contain multitudes. Thank you very much. All right, that was probably one of the most interesting, funniest, and sweetest SCPs I've probably ever encountered in the last, I don't know, a couple months since I started reacting to SCPs again. <laughs> this took me off guard for once. Like, I, kn I knew what, it was going to be a dust devil, but I didn't know what type, because like I said earlier, I went into this expecting it to be another hostile entity that the SCP Foundation had to hunt down and contain, and this took me in a completely different direction. And I'm actually quite, quite grateful for that, because we don't really see that many SCPs in the SCP universe that are friendly, or those that are just misunderstood and have to be trained. Like that um, one SCP, I think it was 5022. The one that goes invisible when it's seen by humans. The one that cooks, basically. It cooks all these meals. I think I may have gotten the number wrong, but somewhere close to it. But I'll probably just put in, uh, what do you call it? Subtitles here saying which SCP it is I'm talking about, if you guys want to also check that out. Um, but no, this was definitely one that took me by surprise. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that maybe, uh, like, a, 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 technically a tornado would have been friendly? I didn't. I didn't expect it. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction video, my reaction to this. And I'll definitely be doing more SCPs down the line. I just got a lot of other videos to currently record before I go on a full-fledged single-day SCP binge. Uh, so expect that probably a week from now, from at least when I'm recording this. I think this is coming out this weekend. So... Fully expects uh, an SCP binge within the next week or so. And I think that's pretty much it all I have to say. So if you guys enjoyed, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.